Bain catches, fires, three-pointer. Bang! Oh, boy. Desmond Bain from downtown. Mike Schmitz of ESPN. We're here with Desmond Bain out in Memphis. A potential most improved player, um, steal of the draft, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Desmond, I guess, how's this journey been for you so far, going from kind of unknown high school player to slept on late first round pick to now averaging 18 points a game on arguably the best team in the NBA? I mean, I mean, it's it's hard to put into words. You know, it's it's been a journey for sure. Um, you know, I've loved every second of it, the ups, the downs. Um, super thankful that Memphis, you know, took a chance on me and believed in me and me as a person, as a player. Um, you know, and the rest is history. You know, we're we're young in, in our careers, all of us here um, in Memphis, pretty much. But um, you know, we're trying to do some special things now and continue to grow and and do special things for a long time here in Memphis. Yeah, I remember when we we did a virtual one of these. Yeah. Was that three years ago, maybe two yeah. and a half, three something, years ago, something like that. Yeah. And I remember we were talking about like like the comps for you then, right? Mm -hmm. It was like you're like, man, I, I'm watching Joe Harris, yeah, Joe and Harris, Danny Green, Danny so Green, right? Good to study guys like JJ Redick, guys like Landry Shamit, guys like I think Joe Harris is a good one for you too because. Yeah. You know, you actually have very similar measurements. Uh, I was just going to say, in all my interviews, that they ask me who, who I compare myself to or, or who I watch a lot, and, and Joe Harris is, is the first person I say every really? time. Really? Which is great. For sure. But now, like, averaging 18 a game, playing with the ball a little bit, proving you can be, like, a go-to guy late in games. I think you've had, like, five or six 30-point games. Mm -hmm. have, have you surprised yourself, even, to this point? Uh, I mean, to say... Yeah, I, I think I definitely have. Yeah. I mean, to, I mean, to a degree, you know, you get here and it's like, okay, I want to get to the NBA. Yeah. And then you get on the floor and it's like, okay, what can I do to stick in the NBA? And I kind of proved myself last year, um, you know, and in this offseason, they really told me, you know, we think you can play with the ball in your hands, yeah. um, kind of take your game to the next level, open up a few more things in your game. And I kind of took that in the summer league and um, in the training camp. And, and now here we are. Where do you think you kind of stack up in looking back at it now at, at your draft class? Like, where where do you think you the top? Yeah, right, right there near yeah. the top. I mean, I think if there was a redraft, um, you know, and GMs across the league know what they know now. I mean, to say that I'd be a top five pick, um, you know, I think is definitely realistic. Yeah, and you've proven it. And we're, so we're going to break that down with your film. We're going to show kind of all the things that you know you've been doing at a high level, and then kind of. I want to pick your brain on just like what's gone into some of these improvements, you know, mm -hmm. playing with the ball and all that. I mean, I think, all right, initially what we knew you could do was shoot the ball, For right? Sure. I mean, I don't know, you've like almost never had a season shooting under 40%, yeah. at least 38 or something yeah. like that, right? Yeah. Um, so I think your ability to like run off screens, staggers, doubles, whatever you want to call it, whatever action. Um, and I just love like, it's a dead sprint for yeah. you, right? Like, yeah. so I'm curious, like what goes into, I guess, being a weapon in these situations. I think we talked about it yeah. in the past, like being a JJ Raddick or a Kyle Korver or a Duncan Robinson or yourself. Um, I guess what, what makes you so effective in these situations? I mean, I think it all starts with um, confidence. Mm -hmm. I mean, to shoot these type of shots, um, you know, you have to be extremely confident in what mm -hmm. you do and you have to be able to shoot the ball in a variety of ways. Um, you know, like you said, whether it's pin down, staggers, flares, um, you know, off the bounce, um, you got to be a, be able to make shots in a wide variety of ways. And, um, you know, I mean, sprint around the court or just trying to get separation from defenders. I mean, there's big, strong, physical guys in yeah. the league. So um, you're fighting for every inch. I guess take me through kind of what goes into all this and, and kind of your progress here. I mean, it's really starting the off season. I mean, that's, that's off season work, um, just being able to find different variations of threes. But like I said, I mean, we're starting here in the corner and yeah. I can tell Fred's kind of flat footed. So, I mean, I just try to get off before he does. And BC hits me. He's a guy that likes to slip out of screens. I know he's not setting it. So I just try to use one dribble to get a little more separation, um, you know, to be able to elevate and get my shot off. And like so efficient with your movement too, right? Like you don't have to come up, come down. Like you're just straight, straight yeah. into it, right? Yeah, yeah. Is this something you you've added, like being able to shoot the ball most like that? Most definitely. I mean, in college, I definitely didn't have that. You yeah. Know? I mean, I was I shoot fill ups and mm -hmm. you know floppy actions, but that's something that I definitely worked on this off season. Yeah, really, really tough to guard. And then now it's like playing off of that too, right? Mm -hmm. So. Take me through this play, kind of what you're feeling from your defender, the defense, and then the float too. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of similar. Um, 
you know, actions is before we run like a, the double away. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I see the defenders trail. And I mean, I might have been able to stop and shoot this three in the pocket right here. But, um, you know, I see a lane to get downhill. He's playing in drop coverage, but I need a quick two dribbles. Um, you know, his herder kind of stabs at the ball. And yep. Capella's back at the rim worried about Steve rolling. So, I mean, that, that floater is there. Yeah, and you had the flow in college a little bit. I, 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 didn't, I didn't shoot it. I didn't shoot it too much, but yeah, I was I was pretty efficient when I did. You like the right foot? I do. Yeah, I do. That's the go-to. Yeah, I do. I do. If I can get to that, I feel very comfortable for sure. Yeah, and then it's like almost like a ball screen, right? They're exactly. playing that cat and mouse. Exactly. Pick your poison, and so we'll show some more like traditional pick and roll passing later. But I mean, being able to pass out of these quick actions too, mm -hmm. right? I know you had this in college, but. Mm -hmm. Um, this is just kind of like simple read, right? Yep, yeah, yeah, I mean, he's he's up worried about me taking this mid-range jumper, so um, quick, easy dump off to a, to a big run. Yeah, and the mid-range game has been strong too, man. We'll, yeah. we'll get into that, but, um, and just talking about like the dead sprint, right? Yeah. I mean, okay, so first, swing, swing, being a ball mover, and then at what point do you know, like, all right, I gotta just haul Take ass off. here. Yeah. See, in these situations, like, the progression, like we kind of talked about, I want this to be able to be a three. Uh -huh. Like he's taking a dribble, pitch it back to me, and I get a three running off to the corner. So that's kind of my thinking. I'm just trying to get separation from my defenders. Uh -huh. um, you know, and then BC, you got him rolling, collapsing the defense, elite level roller. Um, it's another step I want to get better at, live dribble passes. Uh -huh. so instead of having to pick up my dribble here, just fire it across yeah. with the left hand. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, BC's rolling. I could have hit him in the pocket here. Um, but like I said, he collapsed the defense and John's shaking up and he's really good at running through the pass and yeah. um, one, two dribbles get to the rim. So yeah, what happened there. So, I mean, there's like five different things you hit yeah. on that are, that are all good stuff, man. And then this, not the same really category, but I just, I like this. Like you see this from guys like, you know, Tyler Hero and who are yeah. really good at kind of reading this. Yeah. What are you seeing on this one? I mean, Ja draws a lot of attention, mm -hmm. um, you know, first and foremost, and he's been hooping all game. So I know they're the Warriors are a team that likes to switch out. Yeah. And it looks like Iggy's kind of trying to get underneath me mm -hmm. and uh, Damian Lee's about to probably switch out. And that little bit of indecision is all I need, um, you know, my frame and my shoulders and stuff to be able to get by my guy, kind of push the ball out and get to the rim. Yeah, that's that's big time. And I think people think like switching is like so easy, right? But you got to it's hard for sure. And you got to be on point with it. You got to like switch up, be physical, exactly. otherwise this is what happens, right? Exactly. Um yeah, great read, tough finish. Um how your finishing has evolved too. Is that that's still an area? Definitely. I mean, yeah. this area that I want to continue to improve at, but um you know, like I, I mean, I feel like I can improve everywhere. So this, you know, call this whatever you want, um, but I'll call it pitch game here, like your ability to hit the big and then come off it. So this is kind of a similar play, right? Exactly. What we were talking about before? Exactly. Or similar concept. Yep, exactly. um, so take me through kind of what you're seeing on this one. So, I mean, I'm coming off like a, a horns action. And, yep. And uh, Tyrese, I got separation, a little push off at the beginning of the play. Mm -hmm. um, gave me just the separation I need. And now it comes down to whether they're switching or not. I see he stays with me yep. and he's trailing the play and Steve-O's hanging out kind of in that dunker, short corner area. Yep. Um, and they're playing drop coverage. So I know if I hit him, Steve-O's a great screener. I'll be able to get open corner three. Yeah, so all that's going through your head as you come off. Yeah. And then quick hit, sprint right into it. And that's being a weapon like we yeah. talked about, right? Exactly, shooting I mean, gravity. Yeah, what do you yeah. call it? Shooting gravity. Yeah. yeah. What do you mean by that? Just being able to make those type of shots really changes the defense. I mean, you see it, two players are running after me. So yep. anytime that I'm in a shooting range, it mm -hmm. should create an advantage for yep. um, somebody on the offense. And then some of these setups too. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think you had a one against Fournier in New York, like he was spinning. Um, what What's the key to this one? Just my, my strength and my yeah. ability to also be a cutter. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I've gotten a bunch of layups on that, this play as well. So you gotta honor the cut. Mm -hmm. um, you know, now when I see he's kind of staying below me, underneath me, give him a little bit of a swim move, knock him off balance. And I mean, Steve was a wide body to navigate, so. Yeah, big time screener. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there again, like showing, all right, a little bit of misdirection, mm -hmm. um, being able to get your shot, you know, a lot of different ways. And then again, hit, separate, this would come on, man. <laughs> That's just playing in the backyard. You're just playing, yeah, like yeah, carefree. Yeah, exactly, 
Um, yeah, what's going through your mind at this point? I mean, you've done this a couple times. Yeah, this year. yeah, he's open. I mean, that's the only thing I'm thinking about. I mean, I see uh, Toscano Anderson coming. I thought he was coming over the top all the way with me, and then yep. seeing Otto suck in and tag the roller. Mm -hmm. um, I was just thinking of the most efficient way to get it there. You know, Draymond got those long arms. Yep. So just get it there as quick as possible. Hey, you're right though. It's the only way you could get it there. Yeah. And you know, slow mo needs some time to get his off, yeah, so you got to yeah, get it early, right? Yeah. Um, do you feel like passing is still like one of your most underrated skills? I think so. I mean, with Job being out, I've mm -hmm. played some backup point guard, and um, you know, just the ability to get off the ball early, make simple reads, um, you know, is really effective, especially for like a second unit. Yeah. Look where the ball needs to move. We don't really have like a dominant star in that second right. unit. Um, you know, I think it is something that. Uh, is underrated in my game, but, um, you know, needs to continue to grow a little bit. So, yeah, talking about some of your ball screen stuff, like looking back at, at your college, um, like numbers and tape, it's like 25% of your offense was mm -hmm. pick and roll, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. I remember we talked about like, okay, Joe Harris, but yeah. also maybe this. Exactly. Um, I guess what's gone into becoming a better pick and roll player and like, how important, I guess, are like little things like setups, you know what I mean? I mean, it's huge. I mean, we were we were just in the gym earlier today, um, me and my trainer, Taylor Ware, and uh, working on like earlier setups and having just like efficient one to two dribble moves to be able to set set the guy up and come off the screen. I mean, because once, once I'm coming off the screen, defenders are always going to trail. Yeah. Um, you know, if they're going under, that's a three every time. But, um, you know, setups are key. Yeah, sure. so it's either a three if they're in a deep drop, you can yeah. just step into that, right? Yeah. And there's some in the mid-range. Mm -hmm. So you got that. And then this, we've seen a lot more from you, like snake yeah. and ball screens. Yeah, that's, that's something that, I mean, when the defense is high, mm -hmm. um, especially, um, you know, I like to get back to my right hand and I'll have all this area over here to, to play. And it's usually like if they're trying to ice it or yeah. keep it down on the side, it, down it, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Did you shoot a lot of mid-range? You, you did. Never. College, no, Coach Dixon hated it. Hated him. He hated it. Mid range floaters. He yeah. wants layups and kick out threes. But did you have it or no? I mean, I, one on one, we would play King of the Hill and stuff yeah. like that. That's like my only time I ever brought it out just because, like, in our system, we didn't shoot those. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I've always been a confident shooter all, all around the floor. Because it's almost more of a set shot from three. For sure. And then you're like an elevation yeah, shooter for from. Sure. For me. You don't see that from like elite shooters. Yeah, no, I've always been that way getting to that mid-range yeah and so then it's passing too right being able to you know um create for your teammates out of this kind of a different setup here but um simple stuff you're just trying to drag out the big yep yep exactly bring him over see if he's gonna come with me or, uh -huh. or stay over there with steve-o now he has to make a decision um, you know, either from my floater, we'll lay up at the rim or, you know, take the roller and Steve-O. And then that leads us into this. So, um, I mean, you've, you've made a few, especially going to your left. Okay, this one's simple, right? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, most teams trying to keep it two-on-two? Two? Yeah, oh yeah. Most teams always, I mean, usually in the league, two-on-two two unless mm -hmm. they're switching. Yep. Um, so, I mean, in that case, you're just looking to see if your guy's getting behind mm -hmm. um, the big and X does a good job of rolling. Um, yep. Rookie Trenton Wofford, yeah. still figuring it out. Yeah. Um, but this was so this was a big time pass, man. What are you seeing here? I mean, the Rockets. I mean, they're switching one through five, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think that's Jay Sean Tate right there. Mm -hmm. Struggles to get underneath X on the screen. Yeah, um, he's trailing over me, probably thinking about me shoot a jumper, and uh, Shangun steps up, so I just lead X to the rim. You know, he's rolling hard. Could this be with the left at some point, you that's think? That's what I'm saying. That's, yeah. that's, that's the progression, you know. Yeah. See, all my passes I make, I put two hands on the ball. Yeah. So those can be locked drill passes. That way, if I'm in trouble and I don't like it, I just back it out. Now I got a spread against, uh, you know, big like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, we've seen the growth. We've seen you do it at the NBA level now. And then, so even when they're kind of up, right? Mm -hmm. uh, take me through this one. I mean, Dallas mixes up their coverage. Sometimes they soft blitz, sometimes they show. So I'm just dragging them out. Uh -huh. As you can see, I'm not even really looking to attack the rim. I'm just dragging the big out to the sideline. And that's yep. kind of putting this guy, Finney Smith, right here in a tough position. Once BC uh, gets underneath him, I know yep. that there's no help at the rim with Cleaver staying out. So at what point do you know? Because you picked this up, right? And yeah. it's and it's almost like, how do you know he's he's not going to tag harder? I'm making the decision or like right now yeah really. i mean if he was on like a step farther uh -huh. in front of bc kind of absorbing it with his chest I yeah job but since he's just kind of 
put his hand on him. Then yeah. You see Tyrese Halliburton make these passes all the time. Where yeah. He's up in the air, and it's like he makes a decision at the last minute. He did that in college, too, all yeah, the time. He diamond us up. <laughs> <laughs> he really did. Diamond us up. Oh, man. But, yeah, I mean, good read there, diagnosing the defense, you know, like we talked about. Um, and then here again, so now it's like, now you're kind of playing mind games, too, right? Mm-hmm. So take little, me through this one. A little hesitation here to see what the big's going to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and Chicago's a defense that likes to collab, likes to take away the paint. Mm-hmm. Um, look like I'm going up for a layup, sinking the defense and his eye for a corner three, or he's attacking a closeout either way. Yep. Just for us. Yeah, big time pass. Um, and then just kind of toying with Vooch a little mm-hmm. bit there, right? Mm-hmm. So Sean, you can hit the roll. Then you can hit the corner. Obviously, that's either corner three or a dunk. Like you said, he's having a hell of a year. Yeah. Um, so being able to make that read and then a little bit more of this. <laughs> I, I, you know, not the most, not the I most forgot, accurate. I forgot about this one. <laughs> yeah. So you were feeling yourself today, too? I, I guess so. <laughs> I mean, again, like kind of one of the only, I guess, you, yeah, that's really the only way to get it there. Yeah, for sure. Just a little, a little bounce pass. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> But being creative, a little more yeah, creativity exactly. from you, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then here, what they're trying to down it again? Yeah, yeah. Changing. Trying to get downhill, change direction, keep my dribble alive. So that's a live dribble pass you're talking about now. Yeah, now you just want the left. Exactly. Yep, and a little hook pass, bounce pass. That's some of that second unit PG stuff mm-hmm. you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Creating long closeouts, creating good situations for you guys. So yeah, we're seeing all that, man. And then. Lastly, just a nice little dime here going to your left. So you want this with the left? I was about to say, this is exactly it. So this is the one going up with the left hand and then Mm -hmm. the last second, throw it out. Yeah. So that's the next level for you. Mm -hmm. That's the next level. That's one thing I want to work on for sure. Yeah. Well, we've seen all these different levels and and your improvement, you know, from, I mean, back at watching you at TCU to now to it's been cool to watch, man. Um, I guess what are the emotions? Been like I know it's day by day. You're trying for to win sure. games. You're trying to win a championship. For sure. Um, but just to come in at your age, like, do you feel it? You feel you have that chip. Oh, most definitely. Like I'm still trying to prove myself. I mean, I feel like we've had a good year as a team, but um, you know the postseason's here, and that's when a lot of players, um, you know, kind of make their name and make their money. Um, you know, so I'm excited for for what's ahead. I'm you know happy with with how this year's gone and and how I've improved and. You know how I've been able to stay durable, mm-hmm. um, you know, throughout my career. But um, you know, there's definitely more to be done and, and more areas to improve. And lastly, what do you think it is that people missed on you? Uh, my willingness to improve and my my heart and passion and my love for the game. I mean, I think you play an 82 game season. Um, you know, it's underrated. Um, how much you have to love the game mm-hmm. um, to be able to one stick in the league and two be a high level player in the league. I mean, you play every other day, traveling city to city. There's a lot of distractions. Um, you know, basketball has to be at the forefront of your mind um, all the time. Yeah. Well, you've proven that and uh, having a hell of a year. So it's been great to watch, man. I appreciate Thank you me. taking the time. My man. Best of luck. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN+.